SMU political science professor, Matthew Wilson. Thank you so much and welcome back to Ion Politics. Well, thanks for having me. So let's talk about Vice President Kamala Harris holding a rally in Houston. And from what we understand, this is really not about turning Texas blue. Uh, the polls show that former President Donald Trump has about a six percentage point lead over the vice president. But it's more about getting the issue out there, pushing the abortion rights issue in Texas. Um, so what do you make of all this? Well, clearly for both Harris and Allred, uh, abortion is going to be the primary focus down the stretch. It's been a centerpiece of both of their campaigns all along. And I think this is really a doubling down on this. I think Democrats are a little bit concerned about a relative lack of turnout in the early voting for them. Some suggestions around the country that they may be trailing Republicans in that early enthusiasm. And I think that highlighting abortion is an attempt to drive to the polls some of their core base constituencies, particularly single women for whom the abortion issue is pretty important. And at this point, uh, Congressman Colin Allred, as you mentioned before, he is going to be going to the rally, going to be appearing with Vice President Harris, along with some of the women who've come out and spoken out uh, very much in favor of his campaign. These are women who had to leave the state of Texas during their troubled pregnancies to get an abortion. What do you make of the fact that uh, Congressman Allred is appearing with the vice president because he has really maintained a standoff kind of relationship does not advocate for Kamala Harris's candidacy while he's on the stump. Yeah, it's very interesting because around the country, we're seeing a lot of Democrats in uh, close Senate races in closely divided states uh, avoid appearing with the vice president. That's what we're seeing in places like Michigan and Wisconsin and uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio. Uh, so the decision by Allred to actually do a joint rally with Harris is a strategically notable one. Uh, now, clearly, it's driven by issues, not by Harris herself, in the sense that if you look at Colin Allred's advertising, um, abortion is the primary issue that he's talking about. And so given that that's the theme and focus of this rally, uh, I think clearly he wants to associate himself with that and, and try to capitalize on that issue in the same way that Kamala Harris is doing. But uh, given that Harris is uh, highly likely to lose this state, uh, it, it's an interesting strategic decision for him to have the visuals of appearing at a rally with Harris. And you know it's likely something that Ted Cruz's campaign will stress down the stretch, uh, trying to emphasize how much Allred and Harris are, are two peas in a pod. Which he has said, I mean, that seems to be the latest attack line that Senator Cruz came out with during their debate, basically telling uh, Congressman Allred that he is Kamala Harris. And so as far as the strategy here from the Allred campaign, how much do you think that they had to weigh that? In other words, you know, they've been all in on the abortion issue, and certainly this is something they believe that can help them. But on the other hand, what are the potential dangers if if that visual is going to be there now with the vice president and Congressman Allred? Yeah, it's a tough strategic decision. Uh, clearly, he and his people have decided that they think they have more to gain by really stressing the abortion issue down the stretch than they have to lose by being uh, visually associated with Kamala Harris. But it's likely strategically a close call, and I could have seen him tactically and strategically going either way on this. And do you think that the abortion issue is strong enough, uh, especially with these women who have been out there and very vocal for over a year now, uh, do you think that's enough impetus for Allred to pull off an upset? Uh, I would be surprised if that were the case. I think that Ted Cruz remains the favorite in this race. And the way I think about it is this. Uh, I think most of us believe that Donald Trump is going to win Texas, as you mentioned earlier, probably by five or six points. That means that in order for Colin Allred to win, he has to convince five or six percent of the Texas electorate to vote for Donald Trump and Colin Allred. 
I'm just not sure who those people are. Who is that five to six percent of the Texas electorate that's going to split their ticket that way and vote Trump all red? Uh, so I think that's why all red faces an uphill battle. Uh, the, the only other way is to generate massive, unprecedented turnout from Democratic base constituencies. Uh, we're not really seeing evidence of that so far, but of course, we've got a good ways to go in early voting. And, and of course, we still have Election Day. I mean, the, the Democrats would have to really turn out like what, close to 70 percent, something like something, so, really something high. like that. And and then we're in a whole different political universe where, you know, even the presidential race, Trump could be in trouble in Texas in the presidential race. But I think that's kind of a far fetched scenario. So let me ask you about the polling. We talked a little bit about it. And when it comes to Senator Cruz, there was a poll that came out last Friday from the Texas Politics Project that showed Cruz with a seven percentage point lead, 51 to 44 percent. And then today, on this day that you and I are speaking on Wednesday, Emerson College came out with a poll showing this is only a one percentage point race, Cruz leading all red 48 to 47 percent. And so what do you make of the disparity in polls? I mean, the average for Cruz in the latest five polls, Cruz leading 4.2 percentage points, Trump, as I mentioned before, leading by six percentage points in these same five most recent polls. Yeah, those two polls that you mentioned pretty well define the range here. Um, that is just about every poll has found Cruz ahead, but some by very small margins, some by one or two points. Others have shown him with a more comfortable lead, five, six, seven points. So that's really kind of the range here. The interesting thing about the Texas Politics Project poll was it's the only one that I've seen that showed Cruz running ahead of Trump. So that was noteworthy because most polls have shown Cruz running, uh, you know, one, two, three points behind where Trump is running uh, in the state. So, you know, that's that's something to keep an eye on. How does Cruz do relative to Trump? And who are the people who are Trump voters, but not Cruz voters? Uh, you know, that's going to be a politically uh, important thing to, to keep an eye on. So uh, yeah, I, I think Cruz retains the advantage down the stretch, but he would be the first one to tell you this is not in the bag. And in fact, he's telling his supporters uh, that this is not in the bag, that he needs to run through the tape, not to the tape. Uh, and that, that uh, as we saw in 2018 in his race against Beto O'Rourke, it was a pretty close run thing that Texas is not as overwhelmingly Republican as it once was. And I would expect uh, that this will be a fairly close election, albeit one in which Cruz does retain some advantage. And uh, I was just going to ask you one last question. And one thing that we've seen Senator Cruz pushing uh, in the last week, uh, even the last week before the debate, was... Um, Congressman Allred's votes on the whole transgender issue uh, as far as student athletes, as far as this letter that he was among the signers uh, about uh, transgender members of the military being given, um, you know, operations, you know, gender modification operations. And I'm wondering, because he's been pushing that, he obviously feels that's an issue. And then there was very quick pushback from the All Red campaign. Um, what do you make of that? Well, uh, Republican strategists and pollsters uh, feel like they can get some real traction with that issue. It's something that shows up well for them in their internal research. Uh, and in fact, it's particularly important because they have evidence that it at least partially neutralizes the abortion issue among some of the moderate suburban women that they're worried about losing. That uh, many of the same um, suburban women who have concerns about uh, you know, Texas's abortion laws. Uh, they also are strongly opposed, for example, to biological men in women's sports. And that's why you've seen the Cruz campaign really hit that theme hard in a lot of ads. So uh, I think Republicans, both in Texas and nationally, uh, have some polling and focus group data that suggests that the transgender issues work well for them uh, and that these are issues in particular that some um, moderate women are concerned about. And so I think strategically, it makes sense that they highlight what they regard as democratic extremism on that issue. 
SMU political science professor, Matthew Wilson. Thank you so much as always. We really appreciate the insight. Thanks for having me.